Hello everyone and welcome to another video of Fox Reacts. Today we're checking out the top 10 smallest bosses, bosses according to one Josh Scorchall. Let's hop on in and see what this uh, file man has to say about video game bosses. Also, shout out, love the man's content, check him out. A link to his channel will be in the description. Support the guy. An amazing intro. What qualifies as a smart boss exactly? Hmm. Your usual big brain mad scientist slash double agent figure? Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Sort of, kind of. Being a bit of a brainiac doesn't hurt, but there's a lot more to it than just that. For this list, hmm. I'm talking about the bosses that learn how you play and can adapt, forcing you to adapt. It's not enough to be tougher than the toughies. You also gotta be smarter than the smarties, sharper than the sharpies, and be <laughs> able to beat them at their battle of wits or games of cat and mouse. As for the qualifications, puzzle bosses do count, but they hmm. have to be intentional. The fight with Lysanderoth should be with combat, not bejeweled. Other than that, the true <laughs> measure of a smart boss can stem from how long it takes for you to learn the trick, or how hard the fight is even after you figured out the said trick. A lot mm -hmm. of bosses might need you to memorize attack patterns, so seeing how hard slash easy it is to learn the patterns also qualifies. But it has to actually have a deliberate pattern. If it's utterly random and can't be deduced or planned for in any mm -hmm. way, it doesn't qualify. Oh, must have gone and add this all in the video. Okay, this is big. Oh, Rage damn it, Ninja. A champion, and everyone can get it. Me? Him? Ninja? Anyways, here's how it happens. Shut up. I don't like that guy. Just over the top is what it is. That looks like a cool if a game. If appears over my shoulder at any point in this segment, run. So you grab the recently released Skyward Sword Wait, HD, a what or does? bought the original, and you finally get to the first dungeon. You pick up the beetle, this weird flying toy that can pick up items for you, and you oh, wonder, yeah. how am I going to use this for the first boss? Well, you get to the end of the forest temple, expecting to find some sort of giant plant, and instead, you find a pretty boy actor cosplaying as a Twilight vampire. Okay. <laughs> well, this you know guy. who this guy is. As far as first bosses go, Gear Him is unconventional for Zelda games, but that's what makes him... To be honest, his title should have been an uh, demon subject. Because he's technically not the demon lord. The demon lord, of course, belongs to the fallen one, which is, of course, that giant black thing that a put those in the, in the sacred lands with that stone peel on its head that you gotta smack into its skull before... Oh, you... No, wait. Yeah, you gotta smack into its skull. Yeah, I was right. To one of the more interesting ones. Girahim breaks the formula by instead of using the dungeon item to fight him, he will test your skill of the game's unique sword gameplay, forcing you to mm -hmm. read his attacks and swing your sword accordingly. He has his hand out, attack the back of it, he launches a row of crystals at you, swipe in the direction of the wave, and if you aren't careful, he can steal your sword and do massive damage to you, all the while taunting you as being obvious. He then switches <laughs> yeah. his style by bringing out a sword of his own. Make sure to strike him where he isn't. And if I can tell correctly, I think the sword he brings out is what's classed as a sable. Well, I'm not sure on that. I think it's a sh sable, but I'm not sure. Guarding and to dodge at the right moment to counter his attacks. The other two fights with him later in the game follow a similar pattern with him switching style throughout the fight. But by those points, you'll be more used to Skyward Sword's gameplay. Speaking of the gameplay, yeah. this is where the battle can become a bit wonky. While the motion controls work for the most part, they can be a bit buggy, causing this fight to feel less smart at points and more, I want to break my TV by throwing my controller at it. <laughs> yeah, and even though I am it's focusing not on the easy. first fight with Gear Him, all three battles with him do follow this formula, and they are all easy-ish, especially after having spent so much time getting immersed into how Skyward Sword works, and maybe a few of the patterns and how the game has been designed for you to interact with it, hence why he is low. 
still, when you do yeah. finish him off, you can feel satisfied. Not only because you feel like you learned something about fighting smarter, but also knowing it was you plunging the sword into him. Or you could be using the non-motion controls on the Switch version. Mm, That's yeah. great too, I guess. When it comes to strategy-driven Medial games, strike. you don't always find bosses that are particularly smart. More that you have to strategize well, your way something. around the boss or their minions to reduce consequences. Pikmin, for instance, puts you on the spot to collect resources, build pathways, and defeat enemies all within a time limit every day. While the bosses mm -hmm. are mostly straightforward obstacles, oh, Pikmin there is one too. that puts all the strategic factors of Pikmin to good use. I want you to die. Oh, the Plasma, Plasma Ray. Ray. Is the final enemy you encounter in the main story of Pikmin 3. It resembles a certain piece of nightmare fuel from Pikmin 2 and doesn't behave too far off. As you traverse the formidable <laughs> oak to escape this blob, you gotta carve open your path by tearing down obstacles and removing the enemies on your way. The Wraith will chase you so long as you have Olimar. I mean, it can be difficult, but it can also be very fun. The only downside is that this thing does not stop chasing you. And especially, if you run out of time in the day, Olimar goes back to the top and you just leave. You can't do anything for him. But you do, of course, get to keep the progress you made in the path. Any minions that were destroyed or paths cleared do stay. In tow, you have to use that to your advantage and command your leading captain to distract the Wraith while the other captains investigate the Oak and build their paths around it. As the Oak mm -hmm. is a pretty big area, you're not going to be able to save Olimar in one go. Which is why it's important to plan your way around the level and yeah, build the shortest shortcuts. routes to save Olimar faster the next day. Doing so should net you more time when you start going face to face with the Molten Roast Turkey. <laughs> the plasm fight is straight to the point, but it's not Molten Roast Turkey. Turkey. That's nice. You gotta hit it until it splits apart and destroy the droplets to permanently damage it. It does adapt to your attacks and forms defensive measures like using elemental shields to protect its core and mm -hmm. flying in the air to avoid being flattened by the rock Pikmin. As long as you carry a balanced team of Pikmin with you and not get them all killed at once, the fight yeah. shouldn't be too complicated. While the battle is slightly above average fare as far as Pikmin bosses go, the chase sequence against the Wraith was a really intricate take on Pikmin's core gameplay. You have to apply resource management and hazard clearing to grant yourself ample time to fight this boss. Mm -hmm. Granted, it'd be better if that much critical thinking was put into the whole battle, but hey, how picky must one be with their golden prey? Mm, hold on. There we go. In Sorry a way, about that. Insomniac Spider-Man is Marvel's own solution to the Batman Arkham series. Yeah, you'd have to be blind to not see the similarities with the combat and open world gameplay. And yet, Spidey manages to create its own fresh identity hmm. thanks to its heavy emphasis on story and characterization, as well as its notably brighter atmosphere. Honestly, the only reason it took me this long to talk about this game was that none of the bosses stood out in the other categories. Until now, that is. Name's Taskmaster. I was literally just about to say. <laughs> Meet really? Taskmaster, a trained assassin really? and tactician able to... I'm I'm sorry, but that's the line he decided to use. I'm Taskmaster, and you're about to be taken to school. That's that. No, no, that would be more like the line being said by some sort of school-based villain, not Taskmaster. Oh, if anything, I think he should have just said I'm Taskmaster and leave it at that. And no, no attempt at a cheesy line. I mimic any of his opponent's fighting styles almost flawlessly. And this time around, he set his sights on the Web Slinger. You actually encounter him twice in two side missions, and each one starts out with a series of challenges to test you. And the whole time, he's studying you, your techniques, your moves, everything that makes you tick. After completing enough hmm. challenges, he comes to take care of you personally. And sure enough, he's a fast learner. He's mastered most of your moves to the point where he can counter them and is basically immune to your web attacks. He's also a heavy hitter, which really doesn't help. What's Ooh, even more yeah, frustrating, damn. you technically don't even beat him in the first round. The minute you have a bit of an advantage, he yeets out of there smoke bomb style to study Oof. you more. Okay, yeah, that's kind of a wuss move, but to be fair, it is playing smart. Retreat while you're still ahead and bulk yourself up for the rematch. 
Unfortunately, beating Taskmaster isn't really rocket science. Just keep your distance, avoid attacking directly until you can stun him, and have plenty of throwable objects handy. Yeah, the fact that it's not more challenging I mean, yeah, that probably makes sense. He's a bonus boss is kind of the reason he's so low on the list. Still, gotta respect a villain who takes the initiative to try and outclass a hero with their own moves. I mean, yeah, that's something. Can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. If there's any game on this list that makes you think more on Wait, your feet than I know others, this one. at least about your sanity, then Pony Island is numero uno. Ugh, boy, yeah. This entire game is freaking huh. weird and I awesome. thought I knew this Most game. the bosses make you attempt to think out of the box to be able to beat them. But there's one boss that stands above all the rest as the one to not only test your knowledge, but your sanity as well. Being a self-proclaimed more sophisticated AI than the other demons trying to kill you, Asmodeus decides he wants to play a game with you. The rule is simple. Oh, Asmodeus. I said Asmodeus. Well, keep your eyes on him. How would he enforce such a thing? Mm, it's trickier than you think. You need to answer his questions correctly and ignore the weird mind games he does, like pretending to crash the game or hacking your Crap. friends list. Wait, what the? If you aren't careful, he will crash the game for real, and you will need to begin this battle of wits again. And that's pretty much it. The battle <laughs> itself is pretty really? short, but it tests your mind in a way that other bosses in the game don't and other games don't. It's a psychological battle of wits, talking directly oh, to you, the player, and using the tricks that blur the line between fantasy and reality. As long as you think on your feet and avoid taking Asmodeus seriously, you should be able to win. Though, if you are taking this game seriously at all, then maybe you shouldn't be fighting these bosses to begin with. I mean, yeah, look at this game. Are you meant to be taking... Oh, damn it, another ad. Introducing Buff, the gamer's loyalty app. It lets you earn buff coins while playing your favorite hey, games. Look, enough. Moving on to number six. How do you usually take down a perpetrator in Ace Attorney? You question them on the stand, present evidence, prove they're guilty liars, and case closed. Exposing culprits in court is the serious tradition we all know and love. But sometimes hmm. that's not always the focus. After all, you're not playing as a detective, but a defense attorney. It's oh, not yeah, your job right. to discover the facts. It's your job to wield those facts like weapons in the arena of law. As one of a righteous hmm. stance, Phoenix always holds up to the virtue of protecting the falsely accused. Otherwise, the case is of no interest to him. So what if he not only has to defend a guilty person, but it's his only option? This oh, ravishing young right. man is Matt on guard, an action star and defendant accused of murdering his rival, Juan Corita. Though he seems like a docile fellow, one look at his background should tell you history doesn't smile upon him. The guy spited his ex-girlfriend by leaking the relationship to Juan, who happened to be her boyfriend at the time. He broke up with her as a result, which led to her committing suicide and Ooh. heartbreak. Juan would Damn. later conspire with Matt's manager, Adrian Andrews, to forge a suicide note and destroy Matt's reputation. It didn't take long before he became the butt of a murder case. Of course, you don't find out about all that wow, until that much something. later, when it's revealed that Matt hired an assassin to do the dirty work of killing Juan for him. The worst part is that Phoenix even thought he could trust the guy, given how he technically didn't lie about not being a murderer. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, you... Come here, come huh. here for a second. I'm gonna talk to you. Okay, so Wait, what the your hell? job is to expose the lying hearts of people, right? Okay, now correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't inciting someone to murder still a degree of murder? So he's still alive. And let the record show mm -hmm. you have reacted before during lies of omission. Are you just oh. picking and choosing things here? That must be something from the video game. Oh, damn. I've never played it, so I don't completely get the reference, but I think I do. Normally, at that point, Phoenix would have just dropped the case, but here's the catch. Matt's assassin, Shelly DeKiller, holds Maya hostage as leverage against Phoenix. So, oh, either Phoenix complies shit. with his defense, or he loses the person he holds dearest to him. Knowing Phoenix, he couldn't just accept the routes presented to him, so he has to find another way around. And turns out, there is one. Matt has planted surveillance in the crime scene as he intends to keep the killer on the ropes. The killer huh. is not aware of this, and it's up to you to prove it to him. With the evidence at hand, as well as reinforcements passed down by the police, you have to deconstruct the last of Matt's schemes. 
But what happens yes. if you make even one mistake here? Well, the judge will accept the killer's testimony as valid and declare Matt innocent. Oh, While this does mean no. Maya is saved, Andrews is found guilty in return, and Phoenix leaves the court forever, unable to deal with the shame he brought on his virtue to save Crap. the innocent. The cheering gallery that's normally a sign of victory suddenly felt really twisted knowing this is what it led up to. Bummer, dude! But should Very he convince bummer. the killer that he was betrayed, he releases Maya, promising that the man who turned his back on him shall be his next target. That's when you <laughs> finally get to see Matt's broken, terrified look as everything's gone down to crap for him. He doesn't want to go to prison, but if he goes outside, he's good as dead. After all that stress he put you through, you get the sheer bottomless satisfaction of seeing him pay twice the price of anguish. Oh, jeez, he saw it calling at his own face. Bondard is a unique boss for this series, as you can't take him down like you have any other witness. You That's really gotta be have to something. play with the evidence and figure out how to buy yourself time and gain the info you need to come to the right solution, where all of the guilty are punished and all of the innocent are saved. He's not just a devious culprit. He Ooh. serves as a great reminder of how truly difficult it is for an attorney to keep treading the noble path without making compromising decisions. With good perception skills and situational awareness, you may be able to tear this case open. But in most situations, we won't always have that miracle. <laughs> but a miracle may return. On to number five! Oh, hi, Persona! Considering that this Persona? series is a spin-off to one of the hardest JRPG series of all time, and eventually became its own series that now <laughs> overshadowed the original Shin Megami Tensei series, mostly due to Smash Bros. and Persona 5 being accessible, and I need <laughs> to stop talking because of the stupid run-on sentence. <gasps> Anyways, Persona <laughs> tends to be harder than the usual Final Fantasy or Dragon Quest games, so it isn't surprising that there are a few bosses that would be a bit smarter than the rest. Well, what about the shadow self of your team's smartest character? How'd you do it? When Naoto hmm. is kidnapped in Persona 4, she has already portrayed herself as the super smart detective Herald, the detective prince. So it makes sense to expect the shadow self of her to be just as smart. And, well, she is, but she also acts like a toddler to represent Naoto's self-esteem and inferiority issues. Hmm. So what makes Shadow Naoto smart? Well, she has the ability to target your party's weaknesses and adapt accordingly. She has access to every elemental spell at its highest levels. She Whoa. can use Heat Riser to boost her status and uses moves such as Debilitate to weaken stat, Dakaja to nullify boosts, and Element Zero and high tier elemental spells. And this is weakness something. targeting AI would be difficult on its own. But she also has a status move called Galgalim Eyes, which can reduce Galgalim someone's HP to eye? one and cast Enervation on them, which halves stats and makes a character forget a move when selected. To beat her, oh, you need yikes. a persona with no weaknesses or resistances like Tam Lin to keep her from exploiting any weaknesses or using Element Zero. You hmm. can go and Teddy together can keep up with healing, and you should probably stay away from Kanji since she has a tendency to focus on him more for some reason. Despite these issues, she yeah, isn't that reasons. hard. As long as you keep yourself healed and have neutral personas, you should be fine. But due to her varying tricks, unique AI, and personality, she is a smart boss in more ways than one. Though, it does make me wonder what my shadow self would be like. Maybe something hmm. with water. Why do I feel a cold chill all of a sudden? <laughs> we found your shadow self. <laughs> Once upon a time, Pokemon seemed so simple, right? Have the stronger Pokemon, earn badges, beat the Elite Four, and moan about how it took Ash 20 years to finally win a league. Yeah, yep. all that changed around Gen years. 3 when they started putting a heavier emphasis on competitive play. And as with most competitive strategy games like Yu-Gi-Oh! or Magic the Gathering, gamers can optimize some pretty mm. bonkers win strats. This is the inspiration <clears throat> behind number Sorry? 4, the Frontier Brains. Just when you thought the gym huh. leaders or the Elite Four with the creme de la creme enter the <laughs> owners of the Battle Frontiers and they take competing creme to a whole creme. new level. They each occupy a different arena like Battle Tower, Battle Factory, Battle Ready Armor. You get the gist. <laughs> and each battle ready has armor. a different nice. gimmick that'll test your ability to adapt. Like having to adjust with rental Pokemon instead of the team you've grown attached to or having the monster battle on their own with no input from the trainer. Oh, now that's I'm something. I'm going to enter my Cyndaquil in the Battle Palace. What could possibly go... Rest Ooh. Yeah, don't 
damn. Think of something. taking on the brains unless you're one hundred percent prepared. Because Arceus knows these guys are. They got status moves to throw you off your game, items to up their team's performance, huh. and bulked up Pokemon with amazing type coverage. And I know what you're thinking. I think you're just fucked. Just legendary at them because legends are awesome sauce. Uh, no. Most of them have you leave your legendaries at the door. And I think we've all oh, learned by man. now that spamming legendaries a good trainer does not make. Yeah. Seriously, look up any video with Salty and Pokemon Showdown in the title and try to convince me otherwise. Yeah, most of the <laughs> frontier battles boil down to endurance fights, but all the gimmicks and tricks are designed to teach us about how the Pokemon battle system really works. It's not just about having a stronger team anymore. Now, it's about playing smart, mm -hmm. learning to adapt, figuring out tricks in the system, and taking the cautionary steps to aid you Types, as you move your way to everything the top. like that. Bluntly, you either gotta have the brains to take on the brains, or... Get out of the way! <laughs> here we go. Ah, oh, damn it. Another ad. What a sweet little Hold on. Village. Let's make some trees nearby. Okay. Here we go. Hopping back into it now. Here we are, boss number three. Ah, uh, Mr. Freeze. How it began? How it's going now? Ah, uh, yep. And the bumps in between. I already yep. covered Mr. Freeze in my ice bosses list, and even then, we all know his story by now. Arguably the most tragic Batman villain dragged into a life of crime for trying to protect his beloved Nora. Needless to say, his debut his one in the only Arkham wife. series through Arkham City was phenomenal, all the way down to his boss fight. Just to set the scene, Freeze learns that his wife has been abducted by the Joker, so he makes Batman an offer he won't let him refuse. Either bring him his beloved wife, or... <laughs> Bring me Nora this fail negotiation or turns die. Into a deadly game of hide and seek. And this is honestly the most terrifying boss fight in the game. You but the only way of actually defeating him is by doing different takedowns. You can't use the same takedown multiple times, and the regular punches won't work because of his suit. In the end, you just gotta... Well, try and try and try. You have to keep out of Freeze's sight for as long as you can because taking him head on would be suicide. Then, when opportunity knocks, you've got to use one of 12 different techniques to incapacitate him, beat him down by a bit, and then quickly move out of the way while he recovers, mm -hmm. all until his health bar slowly depletes. Even with barely enough legroom to hide, sounds pretty straightforward, right? Well... He's not kidding either. Each tactic will only work on Freeze once. once. After that, you've got to up your game with new strategies because he's definitely upping his. Even without learning from his mistakes, Freeze has a few tricks of his own. He can scan your footprints, call in heat-seeking drones to sniff you out, and can even jam your detective vision so you can't see him coming. Meaning any corner you turn could end with you staring into the cold eyes of and will be Overall, your this brawl last. Really highlights what makes Freeze one of the best Batman villains of all time. It's dangerous enough going head to head with him, but the fact he's so easily adaptable makes him nearly unstoppable. And keeping in mind how you've only got so much space you can hide and escape to really adds to the tension of the scene. The key were being nearly unstoppable because if you can figure mm -hmm. out all the different tactics to knock Freeze off his feet each time, you can survive. It takes slightly longer depending on your difficulty level, but doesn't that make it all the more satisfying when you and there finally pummel this broken man with nothing left to lose? Okay, maybe don't quote me on that description. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Number two. Long drawn out boss fights are generally frowned upon in games and it's not hard to see why. More often than not, they're just damage sponges that are more tedious than challenging. Yeah. Uh, maybe that's a countdown I can do in the future. Fortunately, hmm. there is a way to make them work. Bullet Spun's bosses. Yeah, that could be pretty good. There are plenty of bosses from Metal Gear that could have made this list. Psycho Mantis with his fourth wall puzzle of a fight was certainly a contender. But <laughs> let's not kid ourselves. Look no further than the end from Metal Gear Solid 3. The, the final end boss. The interesting character. Given that he's well over 100 years old, he has several lifetimes worth of experience as a sniper. His goal in the story isn't to kill Snake, it's to experience one last epic battle. 
Heck, he never actually kills you. He pulls a papyrus and just captures you. As a veteran of several wars, the End is an absolute master of a sniper and can fight for days on end. And due to his parasite, he has natural camouflage and can even conduct photosynthesis. Now you can eat some really? And as I implied huh. before, this battle is long. It so can very that easily take can over live so an long. hour. So what makes it work? Well, it's simple. There's no wrong way to fight. Sort of. You have plenty of different options to take the end on. You can track his breathing. You can follow the sound of his rifle. You can even kill his spotter to change his AI. It is a true battle of wits, like Predator, but less horror. But hmm. still the same amount of foreign accents. This fight could have easily been a frustrating game of needle in a haystack. Fortunately, thanks to the end's clever AI and all the different options you have, it's easily one of Metal Gear's best. Of course, if that's too difficult for you, you can always take the easy way out. You can either mm -hmm. kill him beforehand or simply save. Advance your system clock and the end will be dead from old age. Yep. A secret way of the defeating end. him. He just goes... Zexion, Kingdom Hearts 2. His Here little mini-games really make you think on your feet, even if they can be a little gimmicky. Dr. Zomboss, Plants vs. Zombies. Thought you had trouble playing <laughs> your defense before? Sweet. <laughs> now try a giant robot that can make anything happen. Metatron, yeah. Undertale. He actually encourages you to understand your acts and use them where it helps, while he adapts his misdirection fighting style throughout the fight. Bowyer, Super Mario RPG, Legend of the Seven Stars. He can Bowyer. actually disable buttons on your controller. Forget breaking the fourth wall, Bowyer's weaponized it. Dig or not, Metroid Samus Returns. What Extremely the hell? Extremely set of attacks and will force you to get creative using your morphs and spider ball. Okay, that's kind of cool. I may look that up later with the watch. For our number one pick, we've chosen the most terrifying brainiac of all. Here Lucky we go. A missing war machine that can learn your every move, and if it catches wind of you, you're as good as dead. That's right. Our number one smartest boss is... is... Stop. The Xenomorph yeah. from Alien okay, Isolation. But don't worry, play this game enough and you'll get that tension back easily. Any sci-fi horror buff will recognize the Xenomorphs from the Alien franchise. Mm -hmm. A biological weapon created by another alien race that's meant to adapt at a rapid pace, despite the environment or hosts. Mm -hmm. Arguably the most dangerous creatures in the universe, and in Alien Isolation, you gotta go head to head versus one of these slender beauties and make it out alive. Beautiful, you deadly. Can't huh. kill it. Isolation thrives on the tense, unnerving atmosphere, and the xenomorph stalking around the ship looking for its next prey cranks that tension up to 20. You'd think sneaking around a lanky alien would be easy, right? Except this baby breaks the mold of your typical bad guy AI. It mm -hmm. isn't scripted. Instead, it has two brains in its programming, one to control the alien, and the other to feed it information to adapt to the environment, generally point itself in your direction, and keep one step ahead of you. Oh, yes, that just sounds is creepy. so masterfully manipulative, awesome. it is constantly tailoring the alien to you. It does this by inferring how stressed you are from subtle ways that you play. That's right. You don't need to just analyze how the xenomorph works. You need to analyze how the game works. Ooh, and for man. That, you need to analyze yourself. How do you usually react Oof. to oral or visual stimuli? Is your default instinct fight or flight? How often do you check the xenomorph's location? How much time do you spend being cautious? Do you favor a specific hiding spot? You're not always sure what the game is telling the xenomorph about you. This makes the Xenomorph a very yep. daunting obstacle, but for the players who are brave enough to face the danger, it awakens something. This is a program, oh, God. lines of code, a game, something made Ooh. to be beaten. At some point, the player realizes, This bastard ain't smarter than us. If the Xenomorph <laughs> is nearby, you're not always doomed. Sometimes if the AI detects you're too stressed, the Xenomorph could just leave you alone. After oh, all, if you're huh. too stressed all the time, horror ceases to be fun. Dying, especially, is almost never fun. One of the biggest reasons being it can severely break immersion. This oh, man. little bit of mercy <laughs> by the game 
can be taken advantage of. Okay, this, this is actually really cool. This a little bit of hope as well. You realize it is possible to outmaneuver the Xenomorph, but you've got to be unbelievably careful and most of all, quiet. You need to be cautious, but also quick. You must learn constant situational awareness. You must familiarize yourself with the layout of the room. I mean, this just makes go, sense. Spotting and memorizing hiding spots and escape routes. Getting clever with whatever tools you can scrounge up. Being good with both long-term strategy and thinking on your feet. With enough time and practice, by the end of the game, the smart move becomes pure instinct. Survival instinct. When it comes yep. to game immersion, isolation has made it as real as it can get with an alien that can really Man, this galaxy sounds really fun. I mean, terrifying, but fun. What made it so scary was how smart it actually was. Couple that with a tense, claustrophobic atmosphere, and we may have a game almost on par with the original movie genre by forcing you to live through it. I'm the fiery Joker, and... <laughs> Well, that's it. Time to burn the house down. Cut. Yep. <laughs> and that's where we're going to leave off today's video. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more. And down in the description will be a link to the original video so you can check out the original cradle. And I'll see all you cubs in the next video. Goodbye.